Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 35, and what I'd like to do today is solve a single problem dealing with equilibrium. And what we're going to look at is a problem that has two, two ropes supporting a mass, and the ropes happen to be at the same angle. And what you'll see is that if we have the same angle, they're going to have the same value for the tension in the ropes. Now, I haven't used the word tension before yet, and I want you to realize that the word tension sounds a little scary, but the reality is it's just a fancy word for a force on a rope. So if you have a rope and you pull on the rope, you are supplying tension to the rope. In this case, we're going to do a problem where we have an object hanging from a rope, and it's like a clothesline, and what will happen is if it's in the middle of the clothesline, it will produce the same angle on each side. Now each side, each strand of the rope, one going up to the right and one going up to the left, will support the object equally. If the angles are different, they don't necessarily have the same value. Now let me give you a really simple example, one that we don't need to do a calculation for. Let's say I have a mass and it's a 10 kilogram mass, and I put it in between two, um, one rope, but I hold the rope with each end uh, in one hand each. Well, if I have that uh, mass, that 10 kilogram mass, and I let it hang vertically, well then effectively I have two strands of rope supporting that one mass. If it's a 10 kilogram mass and they're all going vertically, the 10 kilograms down has to equal the two upward forces up. Well, that means it has to be supported as five kilograms in each um, strand. Now remember, mass is not a force, so the values would actually have to be multiplied by 9.8 in order to get forces. The mass times the acceleration of gravity gives you a force. But for now, just in terms of conceptually, you have to realize that the mass hanging down is equally supported by the ropes going upward. As I move the strands of rope more horizontally, so if I separate my arms and try to um, increase the angle between the ropes, what's going to happen is the tension is going to increase as um, I, I become closer to the horizontal. In fact, it would be impossible for me to get the rope completely horizontal. Now what you can do is try this at home. If you have um, something that you can hang from a little string or a rope and you try to pull that string completely horizontally, you'll find that there's always going to be a little dip in the rope. The reason that's the case is because you need to have some component of the rope going up to cancel out the downward force. Gravity is always going to pull downward, so you have to have an upward component. If the strands of rope are completely horizontal, it would be impossible. You would actually have an infinite force on that rope. The rope would not be able to handle a tension of infinity. So you have to have some dip every time you have a, a mass hanging from any strand. Now you may notice that if you look at street lights, they might be on poles, and the poles are rigid throughout. So they're not going to experience that little bit of sag. But if you look at anything that's supported in, a, in the middle of a rope, even if you have a clothesline outside and you hang a, a, you know, a, let's say a towel or something like that that's wet, you'll notice that the clothesline has to sag. No matter how tight you make the clothesline, there will be some sag in the middle. But that's effectively equilibrium. Every time you're hanging up clothes on a clothesline or you're trying to hang a sign or you're trying to just support something with ropes, you are trying to create a, a state of equilibrium. And that's merely all the forces adding up to zero. Now let's get on to that problem and see how to solve uh, an equilibrium problem where the angle is the same on both strands of rope. All right, now we're going to start using vectors to solve actual problems. And equilibrium problems are one of the applications of this. And what we have here is a problem where we have a bear hanging from a rope that was originally hung horizontally, and the bear is now applying a downward force because of his weight of a 
1,335 newtons. I'm going to write newtons out. I know that we haven't talked too much about newtons before, but that is a vector. It's a force. The one problem we have is that the angle is given here of 20 degrees upward to the horizontal. Now, when we deal with the problem such as this, if the angles are the same, then the vectors on each strand of the rope are going to be the same as well. They share the burden equally. Now, if we had our two ropes going vertically like this, and for whatever reason the bear was just hanging from two ropes, all we'd have to do is take 1,335 and just divide it by two. We wouldn't have to do much work. It would be 667.5 newtons in each rope. As the rope flattens, the tension gets bigger. And remember, tension is just a fancy word for the force on a rope. So in this case, I can call it tension and tension because they're the same value. We could also call it vector 1 and vector 1 or A and A or something like that. But these T's are unknown. So what we're going to need to do is the same concept that we do for any mathematical vector problem. We need to break the legs and force them to be perpendicular. Because remember, perpendicular vectors are independent. So, in order to get the x, I would do t cos 20, t sin 20 for the y, and the same on this side, t cos 20, t sine 20. If we knew the value for t, we would calculate it. It would be a number, whatever the number is, times the sine of 20, but we don't know it. So at this point, we have two vectors pointing in the x direction, two vectors pointing in the vertical y direction, and don't forget, the bear is pointing down. So equilibrium problems are solved like this. You sum up all the x vectors and set it equal to 0. You sum up all the y vectors and set it equal to 0. And then you'll have two equations. And you can solve for two unknowns with that. Now, in the x direction, we have a t cosine 20. And we have another t cosine 20. And they equal 0. But don't forget about the signs. Because t cosine 20 over here is positive, t cosine 20 on the other one is negative. So what this actually says is t cosine 20 equals t cosine 20. And if we divide by t cosine 20, 1 equals 1. Well, that's wonderful, and it's true, but it doesn't tell us what t is. So that direction actually doesn't help us. Instead, we need to look to the y direction. And if you remember, we have a t sine 20 plus t sine 20, both of those point up, so they're positive, minus 1335 newtons equals 0. Well, now t is our only unknown. So what I do is as follows. I'm going to bring this newtons over to the other side, because I don't like the negative, And I'm going to combine the two t terms, the 2d terms, 2t sine 20 because there's two of them, equals 1335. Now, I need to divide by 2 sine 20. 2 sine 20. 2 is cancel. The sine 20 is cancel. And I'm left with t equals, well, my answer. 1335 divided by parentheses, 2 times sine 20, close parentheses. And then close them again. And I get... 1951.64 newtons. So if we had it at 90 degrees, it was 600 newtons. Now that we have it flatter and flatter, it goes up to a considerable amount. And what could happen is the rope may have a certain tolerance. It could only handle 1750 newtons. So as soon as that bear tries to hang from that clothesline, it would snap the line. Now, however, maybe the rope can handle 2,000 newtons, in which case the bear would just be hanging there, 
trying to steal all the food, perhaps a picnic basket, and um, it would uh, still be hanging from that, that rope. It all depends on how strong the rope is and what the tolerance of the rope uh, would be. That kind of information could be given in the problem. If the rope can handle 2,000 newtons of force at each end, um, does the bear break the, the line? Um, in this case, it would be yes. If it can only handle 1,500, the answer would be no. The bear would fall to the ground.